Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by AOL Music and Spinner.com, where you can get free MP3s, exclusive interviews, and more. Video bandwidth for the Daily Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. It's time for the Daily Gizwiz with Mad's maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1030 for Friday, February 19th, 2010. The Motorola Rocker. And now, get ready for Dick! When you first enter the island of Manhattan, the eerie quietness may puzzle you. No one is around, not even birds in the trees, just a silence, like the silence of a tomb. Walk up Amsterdam Avenue, hang a right on 71st Street, turn left on Broadway, then a, a button hook around the corner, and you'll find yourself standing in front of a quiet, deserted brick castle. The castle known as Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out. It is Gadget Warehouse. There are no windows and no doors. There he is. Get him. The Gadget Guy, Dick D. Bartolo. Come here, you. I got you. <laughs> How you doing, Leo? What? Yes, I bet you're oh, surprised to see me you here. You didn't bring your car. Why do you have that key fob there? What are you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, that key fob. We were talking about yes. this yesterday. If you didn't hear yesterday's show, rewind and go back to yesterday because, boy, that key, I'm just thinking, how much did I spend on this network? For twelve dollars, I got a I got to do a video podcast now. Yeah, for my keychain. Exactly. What am I crazy? Exa and for the first time ever, the video quality would match the quality of the program. <laughs> yes, it's amazing. You over? <laughs> I mean. I feel bad because you got it for $12 and I paid almost 17 Imagine how you feel. How much did you spend on your cameras? Oh, you know, like $15,000, Dick. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. And they're big. They're well, big. Of course, the thing is, when you have guests come in and you say, look into the keychain. Yeah, then they're uh, not going to take me seriously. You know, it's, no. It, it's not but now that we've got that big sign out front, I'm feeling pretty yeah, good. Yeah, now I mean, the that, sign, the sign. Yeah. By the way, you you you've seen the sign, right? It's so yeah. it's so beautiful. I mean, um, what, for a long time in front of the Twit Cottage, we had just this generic thing that said the, the Cavanaugh Cottage, and then we we got it painted, and uh, and it's just really looking really looking good now. Uh, it's got Dick's image. Yeah. It says in really big letters, "The Daily Gizwiz." I know. Yeah. Now, will the other hosts object to that? You think? Oh no, they know that you're the king. Okay, good. Okay, good. You're the you're the okay. top. I'm the top. Yeah, Bill Meeks, yeah. the sign painter on that one, but he he just did a great job. I think he captured you very I well. I think he did too, and especially very few people don't real uh, realize that under my Gizwiz LED hat, yeah. I have the number eight. <laughs> so that he got that it was really good. That's not that's not a number. That's your hairpiece. That's my hairpiece. Yeah. Exactly. It's a lucky exactly. hairpiece. It blew away. But then when it blows away and I have to reorder another one, I just say, hey, send another number eight. So yeah. That's uh, why I never had that taken off. Somebody suggested that we should maybe have made it a little bit more garish and gaudy like Las Vegas and have neon lights and stuff. But, I, you know, this Petaluma is not that kind of a town. No, it's not that kind of town. No. But I wouldn't object. <laughs> Petaluma is a lot like Bedford Falls in the, you know, the, uh, the uh, It's a Wonderful Life movie. Oh, yeah. Not the, you not, grew up there, didn't you? Bedford Falls? Isn't, no. Isn't that in Rhode Island? Where is Bedford Falls? Well, there's a new Bedford in Rhode Island. I don't know if that's oh, what okay. Bedford that's Falls what is. Oh, okay. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, maybe it was based on that. But, you know, it's not like the Bedford Falls in the main part of the movie. It's like the Bedford Falls part where he comes back because he, he's gone and, and it turned into like kind of a, a 
a cesspool. That's that's Petaluma. That that part uh, of the movie. In fact, I think they filmed uh, that here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, exactly. Yeah. Are you friends with the people at the Chamber of Commerce? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> no. Okay. Because I I would expect you're going to have a visit soon. Somebody sent me. I think it was a tweet. Somebody tweeted, "What a pit Petaluma is," and they put at Leo Laporte. And I said, hey, that's great news. You no longer have to visit here. You no longer have to come back. In fact, stay away. Yeah. So I, Petaluma, I like Petaluma. It's a beautiful town. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Oh, the railroad's coming back, pal. You just wait. <laughs> right through the cottage. <laughs> so what is your... Now, I have promised, I have pledged, I have committed to buying every gadget this week. I bought the coffee well, maker. No, well, the, the Dick's I Gadget bought, Warehouse, you really... I bought the gloves. I already had the, the pogo plug. I mean, it's Seagate, but right. it's the same. Well, you know what? And it's I bought be the camera. It's so, going to be interesting if you had this gadget. Yeah. Now, I had this gadget only for two weeks on loan. So it's not in the gadget warehouse. But since we're always talking about cell phones, I thought we would talk about a cell phone that didn't work out so well. Oh, I probably did have this one. What is it? Okay. Did you have the Motorola Rocker? I did. Oh, Not did such you? a good phone, yeah. Well, the rocker was, for those who didn't have a rocker, the first Motorola phone that could download and play tunes from iTunes. I, I think I might even, yeah, that's right. And, and Apple made a big deal out of this, too. They did, except yeah. the thing, what, what was bad about it, Leo, is that Apple didn't want to cut too much into their own business. Right. So the rocker was limited to you having 100 songs. <laughs> That's from, enough. Who could, from iTunes. Come on. Who would want more than 100 songs, Dick? Really? And then you, if you wanted more songs, there was another MP3 player on it. So you could play your other songs. Oh, please. Right. Yeah, they really weren't very well committed to this, were no. they? And then also it was an exclusive with Singular. Yeah, yeah. And also Which Singular had a ringtone business selling ringtones. So they would not allow you to download ringtone. <laughs> you have, you may have the song, but you got to buy it again if you wanted to read a ringtone. Yeah. So when they got done explaining all the yeah. ramifications, I said, you know what, just, just lend me yeah. one for a week. Yeah. I don't think that. this is going to be my main phone. But it, it hung on just for about a year, and then it went away. But you, So you had one. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Well, review unit, I, it was, I was oh, very okay. underwhelmed with it. Yeah, and I've had a, a couple of Motorola's since then. You know, it's interesting because Singular is now AT and T, so yes. I didn't really think about this, but really, uh, Apple's relationship with AT and T began with the Rocker. Oh, you know, that's interesting. Yeah, that's that's interesting. But it was kind of tenuous. I think the fact that they would say they we're going to support the phone, but only you know yeah. you can't do this and yeah. you can't do no, they you they know. were never comfortable. No, no, you know, I, I think in, they were seeing down the road they were just going to run the industry. The way they saw it fit. Yes. So that's why the rocker rocks no more. My friend, the rocker. Yes. Doesn't that sound like one of those spy things when you walk up to somebody? The the rocker rocks no more at midnight. Oh, yeah, it sounds like code. Yeah. Code. When and you say, Leo. For the Twit Cottage. Yes, you can't get in without the password. You have to knock, and knock. Dane will open the door and say, you have to say, the rocker rocks no more. And then oh, the person says, in. the rocker rocks in. no more. So Dane is going to tell them when they come to the door, you have to say, the rocker rocks no more. And then they say that well, and no, they come in. Well, no, he can't say that. No, no, no. Oh, they okay, have I to know that. I thought that's good because it seemed like a, a little yeah. flaw in the plan if he tells them that. No, no. Oh, okay. No. And so that it works well, Colleen has to be 20 feet in front of the cottage saying to people, when you go to the door, be sure to say, the rocker rocks no more. Or you'll get no guests. The rocker. See what I mean? Rocks no more. Hey. Come on in. <laughs> and close the door behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Oh, goodness. Somebody's turned this place into a disco. Everybody, do the duck. Here come the letters. Those lovely letters. Here come the kids with letters. Now. Woo, woo. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, the star of our show, <laughs> Mr. Woo Woo. Did you? Okay, come on, tell the truth. In your <laughs> you, disco heyday. Good. And you're in the disco floor. Yes. You're here at Studio 54. You're a younger man. You're hip. You're happening. Yes. You're dancing like crazy. Maybe your shirt is off. Are you going whoop whoop? <laughs> no. Come on. I know you did. No. I did. No, I, I, I never did. You never did that? You did? Oh, yeah. I tell you what I did, and I was just too embarrassed. I still I do that. I bought a tambourine. No, you know, no, no, no. Don't no, say you didn't. <laughs> but you couldn't bring yourself to do it. Uh, no, I, I bought one. No. And also, the terrible thing is it's very hard to hide that you have a tambourine. <laughs> because when you get there, and they're you discouraging the. Yeah, uh, bought this. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere you go, you hit. It's <laughs> rattling. <laughs> uh, could I check my coat? <laughs> the guy goes, well, Why is your coat going? <laughs> I said, but Check my coat, but don't hang look it up in the pocket. Really slow. <laughs> <laughs> So what was the plan? You were gonna you were gonna bring. Are you hiding a tam? Were you gonna br br break I was it out? Bring at the some tambourine point? and. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, <laughs> what well, the you heck? Know, we used to go a lot of the Goods and Todd people. We we were crazy. We were young and crazy. Young, and we didn't have any. Wild. Have to worry about the door policy because we were show people. You're show. You're they're you're show people. Wow. Show so people. so they're but actually you know what? everything is. Was it policy that Attitude. said no, no tambourines? <laughs> no, the, the the thing about about Studio Fifty Four was you know there could be one. I'm gonna. Insult. Is it too late to add something to the sign? I would like to add no tambourines allowed on the front of the sign. Well, then you have to say the secret word, and then you <laughs> no tambourines. No rock, no rocks, no more. <laughs> the rock, I have no tambourine. No I think we should have it. This is a tambourine-free zone. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I like. Well, I think Petaluma is a tambourine free zone. I think the whole city. You know, you know what our, you know our, our secret time. shame is? What? The um, the accordion festival. What about it? Well, it's well, it's just up the road a piece in Katati. The Katati accordion festival. Oh. Yeah. So we couldn't really ban tambourines the, if we if we're actually inviting people with accordions to come here. Yeah, can't really. Well, you got the the mustard plaster liver parade. What is that thing? Yeah, the mustard plaster every... parade. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> the <cu> <laughs> that's a good place. <laughs> the cutest little sucking wound in town. It's really fun. Oh, nice. Oh, now, what's I the love name that. of the other town? Cotati. <laughs> Cotati. Yeah. So if things get dull in Petaluma, you can always go to Cotati. That's what we tell people who are thinking about moving yeah, out there. Katati, just up the road, a piece of turn oh, left yeah. at the go Shell to Station. You go up the old yeah. Redwood Highway uh, there, you'll find it right there. It's if it's for the closed Blue in Petaluma, it's open in Katati. Oh, that's yeah. their, that's they their law. They got everything in Katati. That's your place to go. Katati's a great little town. You ever been there? Oh, Katati's my hometown. <laughs> my hometown. Katati, my hometown. And they're famous for accordions, is that? They have the, uh, the big accordion festival there every year, you bet. Wow. Yeah. No. Nothing to mess around with, huh? No, sir. No, sir. Hey, we are uh, hard to Wait, believe. the letter. You played the theme. I have to read oh, the letter. Oh, I'm sorry. Then you can get out we of were, here. We were having fun with it. Yeah. Are <laughs> we done? Take your hat off. Are we out of here? Down, okay. Put your coat on. Okay. Take your coat off. All right. Sit just for another Russian minute. Renee means. Shaw from Australia, right? Oh, I've heard of that. Hey, I'm a big fan of the Daily Gizwiz. I must admit it has made many a break at work a good one. I enjoy listening to you and Leo learning about all those gadgets I cannot afford or order delivered into Australia. However, I thought I'd let you know about a little beauty I discovered last year. As you know, we've had over a ton of podcasts. You may have looked at one already. But I have to tell you about the Light Scribe pen. Oh, wait, we know about this. This has changed my life. I'm a writer. It means I need the ability to produce a lot of words and not much in the way of graphics or multimedia. The Light Scribe pen has enabled me to get rid of my bulky, heavy laptop and replace it with a small, lightweight pen and a notebook. Uh, the best part is I can put it down, walk away, and come back without the thing running out of power or going to sleep. Keep up the good work, Renee Shaw, Australia. And Renee, we like the light scribe pen, uh, and we did it 
um, probably a year or so ago when it first came out. It's the pen that record has a recorder in it and it records lectures. And as you write, it actually analyzes what you're writing. And when you plug it into your computer, it transcribes what you've written. So it's yeah. pretty good. No, it's it's very cool. Yeah, I keep meaning to get one of those. Try, you don't I have to buy like that. I, you, don't have to, you don't have to buy things that the letter writers suggest. Oh, you know, oh, okay, I'm off the hook. Oh, oh, that was close. Because I know how these people are. They're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, I tell you. Dick, we're out of time. I'm so uh, thank you very much for a lovely week of fine gadgets of which I have purchased exactly all. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. But I'm not doing that ever again because I just I think I it, now that I think about it, I was very lucky to get out of here alive. And you still have to say something else. I do. Would you like a glove I'll with a couple be of holes? Here. <laughs> D A I L Y. It's the day. It's own gravy. Uh, yeah.